Art Recognition will introduce you the top 10 novelties of this exhibition, let's say the one we have selected for you. For instance, this BMP-1, a combat-proven vehicle, has been upgraded, modified, as you wish, with the turret of a BTR-82A with its 30mm automatic cannon instead of the classic one crude uh, turret with its 76mm cannon. This is another novelty, an upgraded version of the T-90 main battle tank with its classic 125mm gun. But look at the armour. The front one is a passive armour, while the uh, back one and mostly the uh, turret are equipped with uh, reactive armour and just like we saw on the Merkaba tank, an anti-RPG net. On top of the turret is a remotely controlled weapon station armed with a 7.62mm machine gun. Among the innovations selected by Army Recognition, we have this demining vehicle, a very special device. It has been designed to not only detect, but made the EIDs explode at some distance. It has been made on the BPM-97 chassis, but in 6x6. And the name of the vehicle is 15M107 Listva. The Russian company Kronstadt Group has developed this UAV, the Orion E, and even if it's set to be only designed for intelligence, reconnaissance, etc. A task news announced that some armament has been developed to equip this uh, UAV, which in this case would play the same role as the American Predator. The cruising speed of this UAV is claimed to be 120 km per hour. The engines with a payload of 60 kilos might reach one day, 24 hours. The flight ceiling is set to be 7,500 meters and the mission range 250 kilometers. And with a UAV based radio relay, it can reach 300 kilometers. At the front, we can see an EOIR system with a grown target search and detection in visible and infrared spectrum and measuring distance to target as laser target designation. Concerning the multi-mode radar, in SAR mode we have terrain mapping and GMTI mode detection of fixed facilities and moving objects. For Sijin comment, we have communication signals interception and ground radars detection and positioning. Hey, you see this behind me, this robot, to be more accurate and kind of exoskeleton. This must look familiar to the people who have seen Avatar or Star Wars series. But for Kalashnikov, this will no longer be science fiction. It's becoming an actual prototype. By next edition of Armia, there will be here an actual prototype. This machine will serve for logistical and even some combat missions for demining and so on. So sometimes science fiction joins reality. We are now in the era of these special forces which can afford equipment that standard unit cannot. So why should a manufacturer not propose its own special forces vehicle? Technica is proposing an SL SST Sarmat vehicle. It's a 4x4 vehicle, so foreseen for three to four men. Uh, it's equipped with a 95 horsepower engine that can enable the vehicle to reach a speed of 130 km an hour, which is not bad at all, with a range of 500 km. The vehicle weighs uh, 1,900 kilos combat weight, of which 700 are dedicated to the payload.
in the jungle of the UAVs emerging everywhere on Earth, we have now this Russian company called Radar MMS proposing among its high-tech uh, products two drones. One is called Monitoring System with Unmanned Helicopter. The large one, the grey one, is called BVS VT500, while the small one, the orange one, is called um, Unmanned Aerial System based on rotary wing type. It's an UAV. The VT500, which means the large one, the grey one, is a relay of information, signal, delivery of cargo for various purposes according to the specified coordinates, robots, tactical routes, etc. In fact, the payload that it can deliver can reach 150 kilos with a 5.5 hour endurance, which is not bad at all. It can fly from 0 to 3,500 meters above sea level and fly to a speed of 155 kilometers an hour up to maybe 320 kilometers range, which is quite nice. The small radar MMS UAV is more classical, nothing special to mention regarding its role or its capabilities. It has a maximum takeoff weight of 45 kilos, with mission payloads reaching 10 kilos, a flight engines not less than two and a half hour, which is not bad. The horizontal flight airspeed can reach 75 kilometers an hour. We are now in the engineering part of the exhibition. Some vehicles are really surprising, some not. Behind me is the UBIM. It's a brand new vehicle designed to remove obstacles and facilitate progression of friendly forces. The UBIM is based on the T-90 main battle tank. The UBIM design ensures comfortable accommodation of crew for two people and three D miners in protected man compartment. The armored body is designed according to requirements of resistance both to advanced factors of conventional means of combat influence and no, and also to NBC. Beside the main operating equipment, hydraulic hammer can be installed on the boom, allowing to destroy concrete and reinforced concrete structures in stone roadblocks. Haulage winch in the vehicle allows removing damaged equipment from carriageway of the path of movement. To repulse attacks of subversive groups and to destroy the mines installed on the ground, the vehicle is combat model with 12.7mm machine gun. Hydraulic equipment control system, the Sugo M, provides automatic self-diagnostic and protection of electric and hydraulic equipment, allows carrying out of analyzer diagnostic and electrical checking and adjustment works, which substantially facilitates and reduces the time of current maintenance and repair of the vehicle. The Kamaz 5350 Patrouille is not a new vehicle, but here it is equipped with a road clearance device. It can remove some kind of obstacle, IEDs and so on from a road, enabling a convoy to pass. The Boog M3 is not, properly speaking, a novelty. It's already in use, but it's the very first time it is displayed here in Armia 2018. In fact, the missile launcher can operate alone, but definitely it's more efficient if coupled to a radar and it's slightly higher 